coming. assuming homological mirror symmetry. So that's uh, what I'm going to try and explain. So this uh, joint work uh, uh, that we did some time ago uh, with the new rule, uh, uh, and the uh, and um, since then, actually, uh, this same problem, understanding the mirror map of the Petzl surfaces, um, has been approached in several different ways. Uh, uh, it uh, appears in the uh, Gross Hacking Hill program, and there is a recent paper of, of Czech Duran and Alan Thompson, um, <coughs> where uh, actually a uh, 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 an approach to the mirror map uh, from the ground up uh, is proposed. Uh, and uh, in fact, in the Duran Thompson paper, you see a comparison between the, the theta function approach of Gross and Company and uh, the, the, the Hodge theoretic approach. Uh, uh, what we do is, is different, uh, and um, it, it uses homological mirror symmetry as an input, um, and uh, I don't think it contributes much to understanding the mirror map. I think at the end, all the all the formulas for the mirror map will end up being exactly the same when you write them in the correct coordinates, uh, and you can see it already in the uh, in the formulas that that appear. Um, but I want to advertise this approach, uh, 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 this, this, this idea, uh, because I think it can work in many other situations, especially when you study mirror symmetries for higher dimensional funnels. Uh, and so you can get uh, interesting and concrete information about the mirror from uh, categorical considerations. Uh, so I think that's really worth exploring, uh, which we haven't done. We have only done it for the Del Pezzo. Uh, so, uh, so uh, let, uh, let me try to, to explain what the question is, uh, uh, but before I, I do, I need to say something about constructions of mirrors. Uh, and uh, our starting point is something very classical. Uh, this is the morrison plesser uh, hori -Waffer. construction of a mirror of a hypersurface in a Tory variety. So I, I'm sure most people have seen that, but I just very quickly want to recall this story. Um, uh, so, uh, <clears throat> uh, so to, to, to do this construction, so, so this is some, some explicit method uh, well, at least first half of, the first half of it is explicit for constructing a mirror of a hypersurface or a complete intersection in a toric variety. Um, 
So uh, in in this setup, the the the, the mirror symmetry is, is thought of as a duality of, of uh, uh, sigma models. And uh, the way you produce the mirror is by doing a phase variation in the sigma models to go to a linear sigma model, and then you dualize the linear sigma model. So, um, so for that, you really want to think about a toric variety as a quotient uh, rather than uh, something given by a polytope. Uh, and that's how the physicists think about it. Um, uh, so, so, so the input for this construction is a toric variety and some hypersurface data. So to describe the toric variety, you fix a complex vector space uh, uh, with coordinates. Uh, I'm going to use the physics notation. They're usually called phi. Uh, and then you have a torus, uh, minus a dimension k. Uh, and it will also has coordinates. Uh, I'm going to call them lambda. And uh, uh, so you're describing uh, n minus k dimensional toric variety, which is the quotient of Cn by the action of this torus. Uh, and so to, to describe it, you need two pieces of discrete data. Um, uh, So you need a, a charge matrix which is traditionally called Q. So it's an integral K by N matrix. And it just tells you how the torus acts on the uh, uh, on the CN. Um, and uh, and also you need a linearization of the action. So this is just a character of the torus that tells you how um, how the torus acts on functions on C N. And um, <clears throat> then you look at the rate of invariant polynomials. Um, <clears throat> subspace, which is uh, the base locus of these polynomials, and uh, we get a map from Cn minus this base locus to a projective space of dimension n. And uh, the, 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 the JT quotient that we're interested in is the, the approach, so it's the, the image, so that's the only variety given by this quotient, um, and uh, 
Um, so this is the problem variety. And um, for simplicity, I'm going to assume that, I mean, it's not necessary, but just, just for the discussion, assume that this is uh, 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 smooth in the orbifold sense and projected. And um, <clears throat> then the, 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 the homogeneous line bundles historic variety are given by uh, uh, vectors of integers and uh, <clears throat> because this just extends uh, the action of the torus uh, to one more variable, uh, and you just descend the trivial line bundle by that action, and that gives you a line bundle. Uh, so the line bundle I'm going to denote by O of D. And so what uh, what the Hori Waffa, Morrison Presser Hori Waffa prescription gives you, it gives you some way to construct a mirror for a generic section of such a line bundle. Um, yeah, so suppose now S is a generic section in the central line bundle. Um, and uh, suppose that have a complex manifold, which is the zero locus of S, um, and suppose that we have a complexified Keller form which is a restriction. of a torus equivariant form from the Tori variety. And uh, <coughs> the class of such a form, so, so you can enumerate all such guys, the class you can write as a complex linear combination of the toric divisor classes on the toric variety. So this HA is just the first structure class of the standard line bundle corresponding to the uh, uh, basic vector uh, of integers. H <clears throat> and um, um, all right. So aside from the discrete data Q and chi, what have we fixed? We have fixed this integral vector d, and we have fixed these complex numbers c. Um, and uh, so the mirror of this data it's constructed in two stages Uh, you define an affine toric variety 
which define, depends on Q chi and uh, complex vector C. Um, so it's sitting inside C star to the n cross C. Say this has coordinates ui and this has a coordinate v. And it's given by equations uh, which are v to the u1, e to the c1, the product of the ui's qi1, v to the d2, e to the c2, the product of the ui's q to the i2, and so on to the k. And there is a superpotential on this alpha encoded variety. And uh, this one is just given by the sum of the UIs plus it. Um, so it depends only on the on the well it depends on D. It depends on uh, <clears throat> on the complexified symplectic form, but it does not depend on the particular section. Right? It just works for any generic section. And uh, then the second step, which is the mysterious one, is that you need to find a partial compactification in the resolution of this guy. something which either has compact fibers or it has compact fibers uh, minus some horizontal divisors that are flat over the base. Um, uh, and, uh, and then you need to resolve the singularities of this. Uh, and resolving the singularities, so of course, you know, I, I'm just describing a complex guy. You need to put a complexified symplectic structure on it. Uh, uh, so that will depend on the particular choice of S, uh, and it will also depend on the choice of this resolution. So you want to be able to do this so that it all works flatly in a family, in the family where you vary the S's and the C's. <clears throat> and this is, uh, so, so the, 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 the the physics prescription doesn't tell you how to do it, they just tell you that in each case you can so this is really the mysterious part. Um, uh, but yeah, there are conditions. So you really need to impose conditions on this uh, output, on this final YW. Um, and the conditions are that uh, yeah, so I said some of them. Uh, so YW uh, has to be a Calabiao. So KY is, so Y is smooth and KY is trivial. Um, uh, w has compact critical locus. And you want YW to vary flatly. Uh, let's see. As a complex data, and then as a symplectic data, when you vary S, then there will be a symplectic structure, and this will have to vary continuously with S. Um, and, um, and so, what what you would read in, in the gauge linear sigma model literature is you'll see that they'll say this means that uh, uh, this identifies uh, at least one direction of mirror symmetry. So 
uh, symplectic moduli of n i and b plus i omega with complex moduli of y double. Uh, but uh, uh, but but in fact uh, it doesn't do that. What it really does, it tells you that certain symplectic moduli are identified with certain complex moduli. So you want what you really see here is symplectic moduli coming from the symplectic moduli of the toric variety. And what you really see here is uh, uh, only certain complex moduli. That you need to understand. Um, uh, they are, okay, I can say what they are. The, the, if, you, if you look at the deformations of this pair, uh, you can get collisions of singular fibers, and moreover, singularities of singular fibers can run away at infinity. Right? If you compactify this pair to a pair over Q1, uh, say that we've compactified horizontally at infinity, so this is becoming projective with a homomorphic map to Q1, and you look at the deformations of this pair, which is a well-defined deformation problem, uh, then uh, the way the singular fibers of W move inside and the way they uh, attract to infinity can vary. Uh, so you really need to look at the formations that are anchored at infinity, that keep the singularity type of the fiber at infinity fixed. So that would allow you to uh, have the formations that uh, 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 can still uh, 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 see collisions of singular fibers on the inside, but none of the singularities can go to infinity. And this actually is exactly what you get from deforming the, the category of matrix equalizations for YW, rather than deforming the uh, pair of YW geometrically. Um, <clears throat> and um, um, and then uh, and Again, there is a third step in the physics construction which tells you that not only you get this, but you also get mirror symmetry in the opposite direction. You should be able to identify complex moduli of MI with symplectic moduli of uh, YW. Uh, and again, it's only certain moduli. And the complex moduli of MI are just the deformations of the section S. So now we are really into this murky uh, 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 situation where you need to understand which resolutions you have taken and what are the volumes, the symplectic volumes of the exceptional loss and things like that. Uh, but uh, so this is what the Hori Waffa procedure gives you, it, given that you can carry out this step two and that you can perform this, but you see it, it, it really gives you only a partial answer because it doesn't understand, doesn't give you any understanding of the full symplectic moduli or of the full, full complex moduli that you want to uh, match. So especially if you want mirror maps and you want enumerative invariants, that's not very good. It just gives you some very slim locus uh, where the, the, the mirror is understood, even if you can fill in the, 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 the mysterious parts. Okay, so what you, so this is the, 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 the game. We want to understand how this works for the pencils and actually fill in the whole picture. Uh, so you need to be able to uh, start with this construction, you need to be able to fit the del uh, uh, uh So 
so, so the, 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 the goal here is uh, use this construction to construct mirrors for the pencils and uh, uh, and then match uh, the categorical data on, on the two sides, depending on where your B model and where your A model is. Uh, so BA brains on the two sides are AB brains. And uh, this actually works fairly well. when on the Dolpezzo side you have the B model strange tug of war because remember to make the Horibata construction actually works completely uh, uh, you need to know how to match complex moduli on this side with uh, uh, symplectic moduli on this side so when I say it works well uh, in the categorical sense it means that first you need to actually say uh, how the sections on this side are transformed into symplectic structures on this side but so it requires work uh, in the Dopezzo case, uh, but, uh, 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 but uh, uh, once you have done this work, you can actually prove this. Whereas here, uh, <clears throat> you almost for free get a map from the uh, symplectic moduli to the complex moduli. You just need to understand that map and then prove the homological mirror symmetry. Uh, so, Again, in order to, so I want to say some words about how this goes. Um, in order to <clears throat> uh, uh, in order for this to, to make sense, you need to be able to fit the Del pesos in the uh, uh, in the Horibata construction. Uh, need a setup that will allow applying this more and less a polyvalent construction to the past. And actually, it's not it's not very difficult, but we have to do it case by case. Uh, I actually don't know a uniform way to do it. Um, so. Uh, the first few del pesos, uh, uh, series of del pesos, uh, uh, are just toric, so there is no problem with those. Um, and then the rest you can write as hypersurfaces uh, or complete intersections in toric varieties. We have DP4s, DP5s, DP6, DP7s, and DP8s. Um, so, okay, let me do this. The DP5 is easy. It's a complete intersection of two quadrics. DP4. The DP6 is a cubic. P3, uh, an anti-canonical section in P3, uh, sorry, 
so what is it called? Penultimate mm -hmm. article in intersection P3 cubic. Um, uh, DP7 is a section of O4 in a weighted projective three space with weights uh, when 1, 1, 1, 2. And DP8 is a section of O6 in a weighted projective three space with weights 1, 1, 2, 3. And uh, the DP4 is the only one for which I don't know such a description. So this is a degree 5 del Pezzo. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, but it does have a description uh, that allows you to, to apply more and less Uh It's uh, 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 the intersection, complete intersection of four uh, toric hypersurfaces, four sorry, homogeneous hypersurfaces. in the Grassmannian 2.5. So you cannot quite do what I did with the, uh, with the hori construction, but there is an analog of the hori construction for non-abelian gauge linear sigma models, uh, and you can apply it to this guy and write them here. <coughs> so once you, once you write all the del pezzos this way, you can put into the machinery and see what you get as an output, uh, uh, and the, the output always turns out to be this landau ginsburg model, which is a rational elliptic surface minus a phi. So let me introduce some notation. So fix now k between 0 and 8. Uh, and uh, I'm going to write S uh, will be a rational elliptic surface, generic, with the following properties. Uh, it's going to be smooth. Uh, the anti-canonical map, the elliptic vibration, uh, will have Kodaira fibers of type uh, 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 one fiber, which is a wheel of nine, nine minus k rational curves, plus uh, three plus k fibers which are just novel. Um, so, this is S, this is Q1, and we have three plus K alpha curves and one wheel. And uh, I'm going to choose coordinates because I'm going to remove removing this fiber uh, so that this sits over infinity. And uh, so there is a so the first half of the of the mirror symmetry which which I mentioned here that it works well from B to A uh, is this uh, old theorem of Lucas Arkup and Orlov. Which says that uh, there is an inclusion. Well, there is an isomorphism. It's, it's slight cheating, but you can actually precisely understand what it means, uh, which goes from complex moduli of 
the pets of, uh, of degree 9 minus k. both M uh, to symplectic moduli of YKW and this is just S minus this uh, man minus K fiber and this is the restriction of the coming command. So the really uh, the 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 real world goes into actually matching complex moduli on this side with uh, 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 symplectic structures on this side. But uh, once you construct this map, then they actually prove homological mirror symmetry. So they prove that uh, the derived category of coherent sheaves is equivalent to the Foucault Seidel category. with the corresponding symplectic structure. So if x is dpk with the complex structure i, then there is some symplectic structure n of i here. And uh, so they, 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 they write the mirror map and they prove homological mirror symmetry. Uh, and now the, the, the natural conjecture is that you can flip the a and b sides. You can say that the symplectic moduli here are also matched with the complex moduli here, and this matching uh, also uh, is compatible with the equivalences of categories. So the, the, the conjecture or the expectation is that uh, for every k, there is an isomorphism uh, of symplectic moduli, complexified symplectic moduli of dpk and uh, complex moduli of the pair S together with the Mach fiber at infinity. Uh, so that uh, the you know the correct uh, the Karubi completed derived Foucault category uh, of the Delpezzo with its complex complexified. So this is the underlying manifold, which is just P two with uh, k points blown up. This thing is equivalent to the category of matrix factorizations. Um, now, now you have a, a problem because, okay, the Cori Waffer construction will start with something symplectic and will produce something complex, but will only do it for torus equivariant symplectic forms. Uh, which in these examples that we wrote aren't that many. Uh, there is only one dimensional space of torus equivariant symplectic forms. So if you want to understand this statement, you first need to understand this mirror map, and you need to understand it for all symplectic forms. <coughs> uh, and so, uh, so what we do is we actually go the other way around. We say, suppose, so this is, the, this is the problem that you want to solve. You want to construct this map. You want to write down, hopefully, a, a, an explicit description of it. Um, and um, uh, so, so what we do is to say, assume that a map like that exists that satisfies this property. Then this actually puts very strong constraints on the map. Uh, and using those constraints, you can actually write down a universal characterization of the map and then compute it. Uh, which is not, by the way, uh, what, what is done in, in Gross, Hack, and Q or, or in, in, in Duran Thompson. Uh, uh, 
there they, uh, they actually use the matching between curve counting and periods to, to construct them up, as, as in the usual case. <coughs> so that's, that's why really I wanted to, 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 to talk about this, because this is some alternative approach to computing mirror maps, and I think it should work in many other cases, even though I haven't found a good case to, to test it yet. Um, <coughs> Yeah, so the first, uh, the first observation is that, of course, you can describe this symplectic modify fairly easily. Um, uh, so let uh, M be the C infinity manifold underlying a generic Delpezzo of degree 9 minus k, and uh, consider the first chain class. Uh, for any adapted almost complex structure. So these are symplectic Delpezzos, right? Uh, so take the, uh, so this is H2 and Z. In the second homology, this is just the first chain class. Um, uh, so this is the, the, the canonical class. I mean, it's the same for all Delpezzos. <coughs> And um, uh, I mean, the Hodge structure doesn't vary for the little so when you move the points. <coughs> and, um, and so look at the, uh, the orthogonal complement, the lattice, which is the orthogonal complement in the second homology. And uh, And so the, 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 the first result uh, we have is that uh, this is actually something well understood in, in symplectic topology that if you take a, a complexified symplectic form on, that, on, on a funnel and you add to it a multiple, complex multiple of the canonical class, that doesn't change the Foucault category. Um, um, so adding a complex multiple of kappa m to a complexified Keller form on m does not change the Foucault category. And the second uh, category, as the symplectic form varies, Uh, is really given by symplectic periods. So is uh, the space of all group homomorphisms from this orthogonal complement of the canonical class lattice to sista. And uh, the map that takes a symplectic form to a point here is just the period. Uh, so, if you have a complexified symplectic form, you map it to the exponent of, uh, of the integral So, you need to use Poincaré duality And there is a 2 pi i somewhere <coughs> uh, Okay, and the third part is that there exists um, an analytic neighborhood So this is really the interesting part, I mean the other two are completely standard So there exists an analytic neighborhood of the trivial homomorphism Uh, 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 such that if you have a complexified Keller form in this neighborhood, 
maybe the, the periods of this guy are in this neighborhood, then uh, the image of the K theory of the Foucault category uh, to the second cohomology of M is really the kernel of this homomorphism. <coughs> So, a symplectic modulus of the del pezzo is given by a group homomorphism from the lattice uh, orthogonal to the anti-canonical class to C star. And the K classes of the Lagrangians in the Foucault category are the things on which that homomorphism vanishes. Precisely that. At least for something, so, you know, the, the origin, this one guy, corresponds to the choreographer mirror. Uh, and uh, uh, in a small neighborhood of the choreographer mirror, at least the, uh, the, the, the parametrization behaves as you expect it to behave. So this is you know, the lattice of A model charges. How much time do we have? Do we do one hour or 50 minutes? One hour. One hour. OK, great. Um, okay, so now what we want is we want to understand, as we said, some explicit maps. So, so, so you see, the symplectic moduli, once you view it this way, it's not anything mysterious, it's an affine torus. It's an affine torus of dimension uh, k. Uh, and you're trying to understand some analytic map which identifies that torus with a complex moduli of rational elliptic surfaces with a Mark fiber of type 9 minus k. Uh, that's the mirror map. And um, so there are various ways to understand that moduli space. I mean, it was understood for the first time a long time ago by Loenka. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, in, in terms of periods for the mixed coach structure of the pair, the natural elliptic surface and the, uh, and the fiber at infinity. Um, so there is, a, there is a period map for these mixed coach structures and it's, uh, 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 it's injective, so it, it really describes that moduli space explicitly. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, we, we, we want to do something slightly more concrete. Uh, uh, so uh, we want to understand again why rational elliptic surfaces can be written as homomorphisms of this time. And that's not that uh, uh, difficult. Um, uh, so, moduli of these guys. So, uh, so recall we have. Uh, The anti canonical map for a rational elliptic surface uh, and I've arranged the coordinates of P1 so that the, the 9 minus k fiber sits over infinity <clears throat> and uh, uh, so the, 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 if we throw away the singular points of the singular fibers uh, And if you choose a section, then, um, then the, the, the rational elliptic surface becomes a group. fiber is an elliptic curve once you mark a point and there are a bunch of fibers that look like C stars which are the I1 fibers and then the fiber at infinity looks like a C star cross Z mod 9 minus K. <clears throat> and uh, 
So there is this, the 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 in this group structure we have uh, uh, the collection of all sections, which is the Monte Bay group. So if you look at all the sections, uh, they sit inside this smooth part because they're sections, and you can add them in the group law. So you get the mutate A group. Uh, and uh, it's um, so you know the Mudeve group is going to be some 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 finally generated abelian group in this case, uh, and you get a natural homomorphism from the Mudeve A group to each fiber of this vibration because you can just intersect the section with the fiber. Uh, in particular, get the natural homomorphism from the Mudeve A group with the fiber at infinity of this vibration, which remember was C star cross Z mod nine minus K. Um, and uh, so this is not exactly what we want here because we, we want uh, something which maps to C star. Uh, so you need to look at something slightly smaller, which is called the narrow Mordeve A group. And uh, this guy consists of all the sections which only intersect the neutral component of each file. Because we have marked one section to, to, to get the group structure, uh, if a fiber has more than one component, uh, there is one of those components which is marked where the zero section passes, the neutral component in the group structure. And you want to look only at sections that intersect each fiber in its neutral component. So that's the narrow model. So it's a subplot is a finite index uh, inside uh, the Mondeve group, and uh, uh, and so the pair S and the fiber at infinity gives rise to a group homomorphism. from phi zero S to C star which is the neutral component of the fiber at infinity. And uh, so uh, maybe just a recollection that uh, so we have a, a we have a section, and then we have a fiber in the rational elliptic surface. So if you take the uh, orthogonal complement of the section and the fiber in the second homology, this is a sublattice, which is isomorphic to the negative of the EA lattice. And it turns out that uh, the natural map from phi 0 s uh, to the second cohomology, or the second homology, doesn't matter, uh, actually gives you uh, uh, gives you a, a, a linear map. for the group structure and lands in a sub lattice of lambda. So let's call this guy lambda as sitting inside the, this is the second cohomology S. And um, so I'm not gonna um, go into great details, but uh, 
let me just say that you can actually, uh, if you have a, um, right, the fiber at infinity and the normal data in lattice of S, so these were all classified by Gis and Gioda, and so, so you have a complete list. Uh, so if uh, If the fiber is, is a wheel of, you know, if it's smooth or one curve, two curves, three curves, and so on, um, then there, there is only one choice for the narrow mode A lattice. Uh, so this one is E8, this one is E7, E6, uh, E5, uh, A4, A2 plus A1. Well, this one is something, some two-dimensional lattice, which I'm not going to write. Uh, this one is A1. This one is not really modular. It's a one-dimensional lattice of discriminant A, and this one is here. So there, in the I7 fiber, there are two possible Modé Bay lattices corresponding to the two different Delpezos, which are F2 or P1 cross P1. Uh, but in any case, the, uh, the, the number k matches the Mudeve lattices uh, essentially uniquely. And then the theorem, so I have uh, two minutes to state the theorem. Theorem is that uh, the modular space of fractional elliptic surfaces with this Mark fiber at infinity is isomorphic to group homomorphisms from one of those lattices to C star. Uh, and as I said, this is not a new theorem. This is basically a theorem of Duenka. Um, um, but it's just formulated in a different way. Uh, uh, and uh, the, the, the second part of the theorem is, is what we use for the mirror map, which says that the image of the K-theory of the category of matrix structurizations for a given rational elliptic surface to the periodic cyclic homology to the category of matrix factorizations. It is the kernel of the homomorphism. So it's exactly the same statement as in the symplectic case. The symplectic module was given by homomorphisms. The images of the K theory of the Fukai category were given by kernels of the homomorphisms. And the same works for the mirror matrix factorizations. Uh, and now, so now you know that if you want to have a mirror map that matches, so you know, abstractly, the two tori are, of course, isomorphic. It's this torus, and it's the same torus on the other side, determined by the number K. So you are trying to write down an isomorphism, an analytic isomorphism between those two tori, matching the point one to the point one, because that's the Cori buffer, with the property that for each uh, point we have homological mirror symmetry. A consequence of homological mirror symmetry will be that this stratification by kernel of homomorphisms is preserved. So you have one space of homomorphism, but you have an isomorphic space of homomorphisms. Uh, and you know that these spaces are stratified by kernels, by the size of the kernels. You want an analytic map that sends one to one, which preserves the uh, stratification. 
And it turns out that there is a unique map like that. Uh, it's a uh, multi value, but it's unique. Um, and that's the mirror map. So um, maybe I, I'm not going to. Uh, uh, I'll take 30 seconds and write it. Um, so if you take uh, the, the cohomology of the rational elliptic surface and you write it in the usual way, plus a hyper, a hyper time class plus k exceptionals from the blob of P2 model, and you extend the homomorphism from the Moldave lattice to the, uh, to the full cohomology, so there is a trivial extension on the remaining classes. So if you take this homomorphism, uh, uh, so phi is uniquely determined by, so this is the del Pezzo. And so you have a unique homomorphism which has the property that on the anti-canonical, on the canonical class, it takes value 1, and uh, on the lattice which is the orthogonal to the anti-canonical, uh, to the canonical class, uh, it is what we wanted it to be. So it's 2 pi i, the period of the form. So you get a bunch of complex numbers. Tau is phi of h, and uh, phi i is phi of e i. Uh, these are complex numbers. Uh, and then uh, these give points on a cuspidal curve, a cuspidal cubic inside P2, the one given by the equation x, y, z plus x cubed minus y cubed equals zero. Um, and uh, uh, then uh, the points zero, Minus one phi one uh, mu to the uh, mu to the negative one phi one mu to the negative one phi two mu to the negative one phi k so mu is a cubic root of tau. Uh, these are points uh, nine minus k infinity. This is a zero dimensional subscheme on this cuspid of cubic, which actually turns out to be a complete intersection. It's the base locus of a pencil of cubics. So you blow it up and you get the rational elliptic surface. So, so, that, so that's the mirror map. You take the homomorphism, you manufacture these points, you, so it's multivalent because you need to extract this cubic root, but then uh, and it just gives you the pencil of cubics. And it's the unique homomorphism that has the property that it preserves the stratification by curves. differential algebraic way of getting, I mean, you described it abstractly in terms of pure angles, but mm -hmm. is there a part Fuchs equation floating around somewhere that, that you can tie into this, maybe related to the quantum operator or about that system? I mean, there should be, right? Uh, I mean, you, you can, uh, you can write the, the, well, you know, this, of course, automatically gives you the matching of the Quantum cohomology on the Del Pezzo with the Cairo range of the Landau-Ginsburg model, so you can you can check that this thing gives you that matching. Uh, uh, but uh, th 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 there is no picard hooks equation there, right? Because oh, I'm thinking of the internal picard hooks equation. Yeah, so you have to do something like the mixed cost structure on the pair, uh, right? The picard hooks equation for that is going to be homogeneous, right. and uh, that should match. Uh, yeah, I should say something. Uh, so this gives you a polynomial map, mirror map, for the moduli of symplectic moduli of the Pezos and this complex moduli of rational elliptic surfaces. But you can actually promote it to an analytic map, which is a mirror map for Kawabial trifolds. Because, so this is this geometric engineering story. 
you can take the Calabi-Yau trifold, which is the total space of the uh, canonical class of the Del pencil. The mirror of that is going to be a conic bundle over the landau ginsburg model with a discriminant over a smooth phi. So now you can actually write the Carfux equations. You can write the mirror map for these Calabi-Yau trifolds. And you can write the, uh, uh, the, the Picard-Fuchs equations on both sides. And actually, the physicists have done that. I don't think mathematically anybody has checked it, but there are formulas. So there is an old paper of Nemeshansky, Waffa, and Warmer who actually did that. And, um, uh, uh, and so you can write down this mirror map. It is analytic. It has, because these are non-compact Calabi-Aus, it doesn't have logarithms to third power. It has only logarithm to power one. But it does have logarithms of the special coordinates. But so the, the, the moduli, the symplectic moduli of the Calabi-Yau trifold and the complex moduli of the Calabi-Yau trifold, they have one extra parameter which corresponds to that logarithm. So if you quotient by that parameter, you get a polynomial map and you get exactly that map. So you can actually take those formulas, quotient, and see that you get this. Uh, but this is the only picard fuchs interpretation I know of. One more question. Oh, if not, we come back in five minutes. Okay, fine. So.